connecting brands with organizations. Good afternoon and welcome to day five of the SCORES Soccer Summit. Woohoo! My name is Angela Bailey. I'm coming to you from America SCORES Bay Area, where we serve over 2,000 students and work with 80 different school sites in order to provide free soccer, poetry, and service learning programming. Across the country, America SCORES is in 12 different cities partnering with over 300 schools, working with and training over a thousand coaches in order to serve 12,000 plus young poet athletes, as we call them, poet athletes, because they are learning skills and they are expressing themselves on the field and off the field. We are honored to have such an incredible lineup of speakers today. Can't wait to hear from Carrie and Maggie Special shout out though to Alicia Yano for putting together such an amazing series, such wonderful leaders in the field. And that's what it's all about. The summit is about learning from, being inspired by, and then amplifying the message and taking action. So I wanna let you know that one of the best ways to take action and to amplify that message is to join womeninsoccer.org. Go to their website. They have free membership. It's a no brainer. It'll help expand the community and really to expand our message. Second shout out has to go to goal five. Definitely go check out their website. Women for, uh, sorry, sporting apparel for her. It's about time. Thank you, Goal 5. And you could be one of the lucky people who wins their prize. Every single session, Goal 5 is giving out a prize to a randomly selected attendee. So cross your fingers. Today, it could be you. In true America Scores fashion, I am going to close out this welcome by bringing a young poet athlete's voice into the room and reading one of their poems about soccer. This poem is titled, That Is That by Jimena M., a fifth grader at Alba Elementary in America Scores Milwaukee program. In soccer, I like scoring. I give the strongest kick to the ball. My coach is not snoring. The referee makes a loud call. I think halftime is boring. I just want to play and give it my all. The goalie blocks the shot. He is as fast as a cat. My cleats hit the ground, splat, splat, splat. I like soccer, and that is that. With that, I will pass the mic to Carrie. Thank you all so much for joining and prepare to be inspired. Thank you so much, Angela and Alicia and America Scores. Uh, that is definitely that. Um, thank you for putting on the summit of focusing on empowering girls and women through soccer. It's an honor to, to moderate. It's an honor to have Maggie Entim on with me today. We're, we're friends, we're gonna have fun. So all of you listeners out there, feel free to throw out questions. We were also, also supposed to have um, Samantha Johnson, who is a professional women's soccer player on. Um, unfortunately, within the soccer business, sometimes coaches change practice times. So Samantha is currently in Australia. And when she committed to be on here, you know, practice was one time and now it's another. So that's her job. So we will um, talk a bit about uh, what it's like to be a professional player and how an agent, that client agent relationship from the player side uh, to the agent side will do. But Samantha, we wish you were here, but let's dive in to the conversation um, in regard to investing in women, uh, how to, you know, what an agent does and all of that. So Maggie, thank you for being on. Um, can you kind of introduce yourself and talk about your, your agency and let's just dive in. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Carrie, and to America Scores for this wonderful summit and, you know, just for the opportunity to be here and participate. Um, like you said, I'm Maggie and Tim. I am the CEO and owner of Trinity 3 Agency, as well as a FIFA player and coach agent. Um, I you know, I have a, about maybe 10 years, so about a decade of experience within marketing. I've done everything from sports and entertainment marketing, and then of course, kind of like transitioning to just adding the agent, you know, representation side um, to my resume, if you will, um, even sports law as well. So, um, you know, being an agent is exciting. 
Um, it's something that I've always dreamed of and always wanted to do within the sport. So I'm just excited and I'm happy to be here. Great. Um, and you know what? I don't think I've ever asked you this in our conversations. How is there a test that you have to pass? Are there classes to become a, a FIFA licensed agent? Can you kind of talk about the, that process a little bit? Absolutely. That's a great question. So for years, FIFA has always implemented a agent exam. And, okay. you know, people that wanted to become an agent would have to sit for this exam. It's challenging. It's tough. Um, and then a few years ago, they decided that they wanted to just have agents kind of be licensed through their federations. Um, for some people okay. that have already taken the exam and have, you know, passed it, you didn't really have to go through the regular process. And it, the process is really okay. not much um, with the associations because it's just going through the background checks and you know verifying everything. And so once you go through that process and for each country it's different. So for America mm -hmm. here, everything goes to US soccer. And so even if you okay. have taken the exam, you still have to go through US soccer if you're based in the US okay. um, to then go through that process. Uh, and, and the test is not that, difficult it's mainly about regulations and what goes on you know within different federations so it's actually good because you get to learn about different federations and their policies and their regulations because soccer is an international game it's not just in one country so that kind of prepares you how to deal with that mentally and in every single way so okay yeah, that's, and do you have to recertify every certain amount of years? And then or is every, that... every year, so every year you have okay. to recertify with your federation. I'm sorry, I should have explained that. Every year you have to recertify okay. with um, your federation. When you look at other sports okay. like um, NFL, NBA and those things, they usually recertify and do testing and everything with the Players Association. The difference in okay. soccer is that there's not really a governing body. So there's mm -hmm. not really a players association within like MLS that says you must be certified or NWSL that says you must be certified. It's actually something that I've discussed with the league office of mm -hmm. NWSL to, to see how they can start implementing something like that so that there's a better relationship with the agent and the league. That way, right. when, when it comes to dealing with players and things like that, you automatically have your list of agents that if players come to you mm -hmm. and say, I'm looking for an agent, you can say, well, we have our database of agents that we work with and that we trust and we have a good relationship with. And they're also kind of like somewhat semi-certified by NWSL, just getting that co-sign to say, oh, you can reach out to this agent or you can reach out right. to that agent, you know? And I feel like it would just make right. the process so much easier. Yeah. So, gosh, I have so many questions for you, um, <laughs> but so why soccer? Like, why, why did you decide to become a soccer agent? Because I know you have clients within the entertainment industry and different things like that. What, what's drawn you to, to the sport of soccer? So when I was younger, it was basketball and soccer. I didn't want to be a basketball agent because it was just, it was a sport that I enjoyed playing, but I was always curious about mm -hmm. the soccer space and also saw that there weren't many women that were in the agent space and there mm -hmm. also weren't any women of color that were in the agent space so um when i spent years of just researching and seeing if there was someone that i could talk to i came across a few most of them were outside of the u.s and most of them were men and uh, you know, mm -hmm. by talking to them as well as talking to other companies and even throughout my career, I was able to do some work with like FIFA and MLS and I really enjoyed it. But I also saw once again, huge lack of representation amongst not just women of color, but women in general. You know, I mm -hmm. was very surprised mm -hmm. when I went to the um, World Cup last year in France and I'm like, wait a minute, why is it that a lot of these women, especially on a national team, these women, their representation are men. Like, this is, mm -hmm. this is weird to me. You know, it was weird. So I, I said, um, mm -mm. even if I can't find someone that looks like me, I'm just going right. to go do with it and I'm going to try it because I know I'm passionate about it and I have a love for the game itself, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you bring up, you know, that point about 
having a lack of representation of women in a lot of spaces within in sport. Um, have you ever had any pushback from men or people saying like, what are you doing here? Or you can't do this, yep. or you're not going to like um, carve out your own path. Let me tell you, Carrie, I've had it recently. I've had it recently. I've had it <laughs> really? months ago. Oh yeah. I've had it recently. Um, and if anyone that follows me on Twitter, you'll see I'm very active, very vocal yeah. about things. Yeah. And I was told from three different men that I should leave this sport to the men mm. to do it. Mm. And that um, there was really no place for me. Hmm. And I said, well, you know, I'm going to follow the plan that God has for me. And that's to be able mm -hmm. to make a difference. And I said, if you don't like mm -hmm. it, you better get used to me and get used to everyone else. Because whatever you think you're going to try to do, it's not going to work with me. Because this is God's plan for right. me. So get, right. get used to me. Um, and of course, you know, here and there, little things. Some, some other, you know, agents, they may feel some type of way and say, oh, or she's a woman or you know there's no way that she'll be able to to do this she won't last yeah you know yeah. And when i'm like i'm doing just fine i'm doing right. just fine right now so yeah like i and, tell them just and, get used to me you know because there's a lot i'm just getting started like this is just yeah this is this is like you're getting ready to cook a meal and you yeah. have your ingredients and you start you know <laughs> pouring everything in that bowl so oh, yeah. you done mixed it all up for ready. Now yep. you gotta kind of like turn on the stove, wait till the pot gets hot. That, <laughs> that's the it. phase I'm in right now. That is the phase I'm in. I, the pot I is like just warming up. So give me about yep. another year or two and the meal will be prepared. And, and yes, now that will. meal, the, when that meal is prepared, that recipe is what I like to call the blueprint that, I could, that I'll be able to pass on to other women that wanna be agents and kind of yeah, show them how that, to navigate. That's amazing. And that leads into, you know, what you've done for Samantha Johnson, who was supposed to be on this panel as well. Can you, she was in retirement. Yeah. Um, she's now in Australia. So can you maybe share some of the things that you were able to do for her in that journey and, and getting her a contract, um, you know, kind of a bit by, by surprise for, for some of us, not for you guys, but, you know, share, share that story. Absolutely. So Sam is Sam is interesting because we're so much alike. It's it's so funny. It's like we literally talk like every day. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's almost like it's more than just the aging client. It's like friends. It's like family. Right. It's like mm -hmm. oh, she knows like Maggie's like my big sister. I can go to her for anything. Uh, when I first mm -hmm. met Sam, I met her through a mutual friend that was um, with U.S. soccer. And I was like, man, I really want her to play. But she was mm -hmm. gun hold. I'm not doing it, Maggie. I'm not playing. I've, I've played already. And I'm like, but you sure? Are you sure? And she's like, no. Mm -hmm. so I'd, I'd send her little things here and there. Oh, you know, Racing Louisville has a new team. You know, Agents, um, Angel City. She's like, nope, nope, mm -hmm. nope, nope, nope. I won't do it. So I was like, okay, if you don't want to play in NWSL, what about overseas? Are you interested in going back to Australia? Maybe, but depending on the club and the team. So that was where the past few months I spent days and nights just reaching out because I didn't have any contacts within the clubs there. I knew some folks okay. within the Federation. So it's the code emailing, it's the calling, it's the code emailing, yeah. it's the calling. And it's reaching out yeah. to head coach, sporting director, scouting director, everyone until they knew who I was. So finally, mm -hmm. um, the situation with Melbourne City came about and at first, they weren't sure what they were going to do, obviously, because of the pandemic. So they said, oh, mm -hmm. we're not sure yet. Came back around. The head coach spoke with Sam at first and was like, you know, what is she doing? And she's like, oh, my agent reached out to you guys a couple of times. And then he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, we're not sure. But, you know, let us know if you are considering it. So I reached back out and let them know, look, she's ready to come out of retirement. She's been training for a whole year. Mm -hmm. She hasn't played, mm -hmm. but she's been training for a whole year. And she's ready. Right. She, she and, was previously at Utah Royals. Yes. So previously okay. she was with Utah Royals. She spent about five years with Chicago Red Star. And even Sam's story okay. is so interesting because when she came into the league professionally, most mm -hmm. women tend to either get drafted or if they're lucky, they go to a trial and make it. And that was Sam's case. She was undrafted. Okay. She, went in, she went to a trial, got picked up by Chicago, spent 
most of her, the, the early parts of her career there. Then mm-hmm. she went to Australia, played with Melbourne, Victory, and Sydney FC, and mm-hmm. then came back and played with Utah and decided to retire. Um, and she's done a lot off the field. And then mm-hmm. I said, look, I'm going to get you out of retirement. She kept telling me no. And I said, <laughs> I'm going to get you out of retirement. Yeah. So signing her as my first woman footballer was the dream. And now it was getting her the contract. And I was like, look, Melbourne City's in. And Mm -hmm. they're in and ready. And she's like, you know, I don't believe it. I was like, here's a contract. And it's like, whoa. You know, it was like, wow. Yeah. Like, this is really happening. And yeah. I was like, yeah, it's really going to hit you when, once you get down there. And so we were on FaceTime and I was like, look, you're down there. You told mm-hmm. me a couple of months ago you were not coming out of retirement. And now look. Right. So, yeah. um, so the whole story with that was just, it was just something, you know, that was like, wow, we really manifested it because we said, okay, if she is going to go to Australia, there's one team, Melbourne City. Yep. And yep. we manifested it. I'm very big on manifestation. I mean, Carrie, you know, I talk to you about this a lot too. Yep. Right. See, my sticky, down those goals. My, my sticky I notes it. in the back. I see that's it. my, I see it. that's our manifestation. Yep. <laughs> so it's, it's writing it down and, you know, leaving it up to the man above and just really letting that manifest. And everything that we said we wanted to do, Sam mm-hmm. and I, it's, it's happening. Yeah. It's happening. No, it, it and that's fantastic. And, you know, in hearing you speak, you know, that's there, that's the thing. There are agents who are out there just to get a contract done. And then there are actual agents like yourself who don't just sign any client. You talk about right. core values. You talk about what's your plan. You talk about what your branding looks like. Um, so can you kind of talk about maybe how you take on a client? And, you know, if someone comes to you and says, Hey, I want you to be my agent. Like, what does that actual process look like for for you? The process for me, it takes time. Um, It may take three, four, five months um, before I may Mm -hmm. say I'm going to sign. With Sam and I, it took us a couple of months before I actually decided to sign. Even though I was always a fan of hers, I wanted to make sure Mm -hmm. everything aligned. Um, I'm very big on aligning your purpose on and off the field for a player. So Mm -hmm when we go through the interview process and that player is telling me about their goals, I usually ask them to send me their goals and, you know, they Mm -hmm. send me their goals and we discuss it and figure out if this is the right move for both of us. Um, And throughout those goals, I try to figure out, okay, where's that player's head at? You know, are Mm -hmm. they thinking about not just what they have in the present moment on the field, but are they considering like, two years, three years down the line, Mm -hmm. what, what could be, because you have to always think about life during your time playing and life after. So what I, what I try to do is make sure the player is working on all those things while they're playing so that we're setting up things for after when you decide to retire, Mm -hmm. you're not retiring, sitting there like, man, I, I gave my life to this game and I don't have anything, Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so it's just going through that process. It's also making sure they have, they tie in the community. I'm very big on like community mm-hmm. driven programs and, you know, implementing those things, whether or not they want to. Like, like America scores. <laughs> right, exactly. Yep. Like America yeah, scores. And, 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 sure Sam, the player... and Sam's involved in Chicago. Yep, actually, she's on the Chicago so... board. Yep. Yeah. So it's yeah. just making sure that they have the community, you know, philanthropy side as a part of their goal. If it's not, it's okay, but mm-hmm. you're, you're not going to be able to sign with Trinity Three, honestly, because it's it just doesn't work that way um, yeah. for me. Yeah. And it's not forcing the player, but it's really because everything that we do in life, you know, you should always take a moment to give back because life mm-hmm. is so precious, right? I mean, obviously, we yeah. see this past year, everything that we went through, and so mm-hmm. throughout your time, while you're making money or you know doing whatever it is you're doing in your career should always take a moment to give back to those that don't have or even those that look up to you but they just don't have the resources so right right yeah we're gonna tap into sponsorship and media in a second but I but I wanted to kind of talk um about like you and I, because actually I'm one of your clients and, and I'm honored to, first to coach, be, first coach. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm honored to be on, on your lineup. Um, and, you know, for, for the listeners out there, 
basically you emailed San Diego Loyal to tell us about a player and you and I, you know, we responded to an email and then we got connected through the, the women in soccer group. And, you know, I kind of had a light bulb go off in my mind because within, you know, the higher levels of soccer, co male coaches, male GMs, like men, a lot of them have agents and do yep. their negotiating, do the calling and all that. And, and I actually had an experience, you know, where a male counterpart got his contract in a week and mine took two months because I didn't have an agent. So two it was like two months. Let me and I basically had to, Within I had to beg months, for it. I was going to say, I, to, I was working. Did you reach out? How many times did you oh, reach out just to even follow up? I have the emails, but yeah. that, I digress. They're, they're lucky. They're lucky you were my client then because- that two, oh, months I know. Have, that two months probably would have been like two weeks tops and every single day they would have heard from me except like Sunday exactly I would have given them a break on There's, Sunday so right. they would have had like two Sundays <laughs> off but they would have heard from me every single day until we were able to get this done yeah um but my point in all this is that you know I had this idea of like a lot of times women and girls have trouble putting themselves out there and marketing themselves yeah. and saying like hey I, I need an advocate, you know, they, sometimes you're thankful for the job that you get rather than actually positioning yourself as your male counterparts, you know, often do. Um, so yeah, you know, you and I had the conversation, we talked about, you know, where I wanted to be, what I wanted to yep. do, what my goals were, and, you know, uh, you're, you're doing your work for me because, you know, I found out through a friend that you had made a call to someone I didn't even know. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's like, yeah, Maggie called us. And I was like, oh yeah, she did. Didn't she? So, but that, yeah, you know, you're... that, 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 that proves that, you know, for players, for a coach, like having someone be your advocate, having your someone pick up the phone and say, Hey, like, I've got a good player here who can add quality to your team or, or a good coach here who could add, you know, quality to your, your franchise is, is, is very important. So first of all, I thank you for taking me on. And I, I encourage other women in the sport who are coaching or, you know, even wanting to be a GM or something to actually hire an agent. If it's not you, you know, go to you and say, Hey, can you recommend someone or whatever the case may be, but it's really important. I feel it's really important to for women to go down this road with a female agent absolutely you know, full, I agree. full stop like i say it all the time I, I did a study and i was like i wonder how many women in the nwsl and even with, within the u.s national the u.s women's national soccer team um has mm -hmm. female agent representation with the mm -hmm. national team for women there's not one that has a female agent they all have male right. agents um i think only one of them now has decided to switch over probably because okay. she must have saw my tweet but you know because i tagged I, I tagged all of them in there and i was like yeah how many hey. of you really have women agents or what if you did have a woman yeah. agent while you were fighting or at least trying to get your voices heard when it comes to equal pay and those things you know at least you can have your agent fighting for you because right. we can relate so much, you know, to what you're going through. So, um, yeah. and hopefully, you know, honestly, and I do believe firmly that we will see more women agents. We definitely yeah. will see more. Yeah, for sure. Well, you're doing great things and I know you're going to have Thank a you. long list of people, people wanting to sign on with you. Um, <laughs> For sure. Um, let's talk about some of the statistics about like sponsorship in yes. women's sports. I think there was a very sad um, statistic that stated like 0.4% per of sponsorship money goes point towards women's four. sports. Point yeah, four. that's not a, that, yeah, it, not it, even like, a whole percent. Yeah, it, it's not even, it's not even a whole percent. And I, you know, it, for years, you know, like I said, almost a decade of working in marketing and, and sponsorship marketing and partnership marketing. And, you know, I just couldn't understand the mindset of some of these brands and the decision makers and how could you not want to tap into the women's sports? There's more women in the world than men. So yeah. obviously, if you're thinking about it, 
you know, it's a great opportunity. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, that number just being so small, a lot of brands, they miss out, especially, you know, smaller, like emerging brands. I think if they start mm-hmm. to redefine their strategy and say, okay, you know what, maybe we wanted to sponsor a Premier League team or we wanted to sponsor an MLS team, but our budgets didn't meet that. Well, you could still have the same type of impact, maybe even more, Mm -hmm. because now you're going to the women's side, you know, and you can engage with a a broader um, consumer base. Yeah. Because even if, even if you look at the stats of, of consumers that pay for like an MLS ticket, most of the time it's women. Mm-hmm. It's women. Yeah. Well, you 80, know? I think I saw a stat like 85% of the household purchasing power, like women yep. possess. So exactly. You know, you should market exactly. to women. So how, so how have you been able to like position a brand with one of your clients and, and, you know, how, how do you connect uh, brand sponsorships to players or clubs or different things like that? Absolutely. So like on the player side, um, one player in particular I was able to work with this past year, uh, Midge Purse. I don't represent her, but mm-hmm. we were able to work together on the marketing side, and it was phenomenal. Uh, one of my clients, Voss Water, we were setting up mm-hmm. a campaign to really tap in and give back during COVID. And so mm-hmm. when we came to the drawing board and we were looking at, you know, the different type of influences, so we had a few of our entertainers there, but... I noticed that within the sports world, we didn't have soccer on that list. And Mm -hmm. it was really important to have a soccer player. And when I thought Mm -hmm. about starting in the New York City area, I said, why not get Midge Purse from Sky Blue? She's very marketable. um, And I think she would be perfect for it. And the brand was open to it and they loved it. And she, of Mm -hmm. course, was super excited. And, you know, we were able to put that deal together and it was successful that now the brand is starting to look at how do we do more with soccer players on the local side in the U.S. as well as internationally. And so that's something that we're working on even for 2021. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's important. And I I think you and I have talked about like within your client base, you kind of ask them like, are you a vegetarian? Like what, what, you know, athletic wear do you like to wear? And you, you really try to, make it meet the, the person themselves, not just, Hey, you know, support this type of car or support this, you know, Mm -hmm. soda company or whatever the case may be. So can you kind of talk about that? Absolutely. The huge, a huge part of the agency, the marketing side specializes in sponsorship and partnership. And that entails everything from the initial phase to having that discussion of, what would you want to put in the pitch? So on one mm-hmm. side, it's knowing what the brand wants. And on the other side, it's knowing what the player wants. And mm-hmm. if a player is vegetarian, for example, automatically I'm thinking of like a Beyond Meat, so like an Alpha Food, mm-hmm. and having conversations with those brands and knowing what they're looking for, it's like, oh, this player meets the needs. And this is something that outside of representation of players, it's constant conversations with my company mm-hmm. with, you know, we're just constantly talking to different brands about, okay, what's the plan now for 2021? Or, you know, what is your plan mm-hmm. for Q2 or Q3 of 2021? And it's, it's really just listening and understanding the brand's goals. Mm-hmm. A lot of times people tend to get that misconstrued where they'll feel like, well, I'm going to go to Nike. Nike's going to sign me because I'm on a national team. You right. Know, did you ever think that maybe Nike wants you to have a certain amount of caps in order to mm-hmm. be a player? Or did you think that maybe Nike wants you to be from a certain area, you know, a certain right. city, a certain state? So there's, there's so many different things. Um, and even to kind of figure out what type of campaigns, you know, the brands want. Maybe the brand says we want to do a campaign around women and, or mm-hmm. women's equality, right? It's mm-hmm. all of those things. And it's figuring out who are my roster is very vocal or they're, they're an advocate for women's mm-hmm. equality because not all right. not all you know what i'm saying clients might be into that yeah so it's it's really doing a full assessment of both sides and making sure that you can look at the goals of each and it matches because mm-hmm. then that's yeah. how you can create a good partnership yeah 
So a couple, a couple other questions. How, um, as far as, you know, within the, the NWSL, now there's a college player draft and there are even um, players coming out of college early. So how, how does a college player or college graduate find an agent, think about finding an agent? How do you, like, what type of outreach do you do? Uh, what, what does that look like? So this year it's different of course, because of you know, <laughs> seasons being yeah. canceled and stuff. So what worked for me this year was either knowing some players through other people. So mm -hmm. that's how we were able to get the introduction. Um, cold calling a lot of coaches and seeing if the coach is willing to make the introduction. Um, and mm -hmm. then sometimes even reaching out to the player. Um, and so for me, it's I've been pretty successful in that where I always want to talk to the coach because I feel like besides the parents, who knows that player mm -hmm. better than the coach? The coach can tell you all right. these things. And sometimes you might be thinking in your mind, I really want this player, but the coach can mm -hmm. give you feedback that it's like, wait, maybe I don't want that. Maybe player. I don't. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I want that other player because what I've only seen in a couple of matches, the coach is telling me things from practice, you know, mm -hmm. things from scrimmages. The coach is telling me the player's attitude off the right. field that you don't, you know, you just don't get to see. And mm -hmm. You know, I've spent about four months going back and forth with NCAA to kind of figure out how can they implement something for soccer agents where they are able to go to each school and talk to these players the way other sports have it set up. And what I found throughout okay. my research is that some schools within certain conferences do have an option where you can register. So you have to, the agent has to register with the state. Okay. And then they have to register with that university and select, you know, like possibly which players they want to talk to. And the player right. will have the option to decline or accept and have the interview. I highly recommend that players talk to as many agents as possible. If you only talk mm -hmm. to the agent that your coach recommends, that might not be the best solution because you right. may not know, you know, you may not feel comfortable with that agent. Your coach is telling yeah. you, but you don't know how that agent is going to be. That's just, that might just be because yeah. the coach and the agent has a good relationship, you know? Right. So I always highly recommend, I recommend players, you know, do their research, you know, do mm -hmm. their research on, on agencies and figure out, especially for the women, if you want a woman agent, do your research. Unfortunately for us in soccer, there's no database where it'll tell you, you know, like right. who the women agents are, but, I tell them one time, hey, I'm vocal on social, so you could always find me there. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, when it comes to recommendations, that's always something, too, that I don't have a problem doing. But, yeah, it's, it's tough because, you know, coming, even stepping into this draft, this is my first, this is going to be my first NWSL draft. And I'm super excited, okay. but I'm also sad at the same time because there are some players that I'm like, man, she would do so well you know, coming mm -hmm. out, but I'm a stickler for education. So I probably would tell you stay another semester. You can mm -hmm. start your master's program or something like that. Do that. So it's, it's tricky, but I would say, you know, it's really good to just talk to different people so you can get perspectives because that transition from college to pro is, it can be very overwhelming and it can be, you know, very scary. And if you don't mm -hmm. have someone to talk to, coming into your rookie year it's like wait a minute I'm lost I'm lost because no, no yeah. one told me yeah you know? so it's important yeah um so how do you see I know the NWSL is growing like Louisville's coming in this year Angel City and maybe Sacramento the following year what, you know, what does that look like? And I think you even yeah. went to Louisville maybe to kind of check out tryouts. So can you kind of talk about like where you see the league growing and, and how that impacts what you do and impacts like, you know, the, the growth of the overall league? I think it's amazing. Um, it's exciting to mm -hmm. see the growth of these teams from Louisville, Angel City, um, Sacramento. I'm, I'm hoping like in the future we see maybe teams in like Austin, Dallas, mm -hmm. Atlanta, even in Canada, in Toronto, mm -hmm. Vancouver. It's a lot yep. of talent that comes out of those cities. And so mm -hmm. it's very exciting. Um, I love it. I think it's great. 
And it's, it's great for this sport. It's great for the league because the more teams you have, the more opportunities for women, um, for these mm-hmm. players, you know, the more opportunities, the more opportunities for funding, right. For investing mm-hmm. from outside. Obviously we saw what happened with Angel City. And so yeah, that's a prime phenomenal. example. Ooh. Yeah. That's, that's a prime example of just the growth and how people really believe in the sport. And I, and I want to see more of that. I want to see, you know, 10 to 20 people get behind Sacramento. I want to see 10 to 20 people get behind Atlanta and Austin and all these different places, because I feel like yeah. it, it would just be, you know, um, so great for the sport. And the biggest thing is it's providing more opportunities for these players, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's, that's the big transformation that I've seen just, you know, being in my forties. And when I came out of college, it was before WUSA, you know, so like just the growth of the leagues, the, the sustainability that the, the NWSL has exhibited and now the growth um, because, you know, every year there's so many good college soccer players that graduate and a lot of them yep. just don't play anymore or exactly. they'll go and play in the UWS or the WPSL, which are great leagues, but they it's only a summer options. league. And they don't know yeah. the options that, okay, you, you can go to tryouts for NWSL. You can possibly yeah. go and play in Australia or in, in you know England, France, any one of these markets. Right. And and if anything, yeah. if you don't make it to NWSL, the reason why you should go overseas is because you'll get more development. You'll get more mm-hmm. development. You'll be a, a little bit more well-rounded because now you know mm-hmm. playing all your life in the U.S. Now you've played in a different country with different people, and and everyone learns different styles, different, mm-hmm. different yeah, playing different styles, styles, all of that. So you'll yeah. come back to the States well-versed in the sport. And so mm-hmm. that's where I feel like a lot of women need to do a lot more research, the players in particular, so that they know what their options are. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a great point. Um, so question from the audience um, or from Alicia, I think. <laughs> is there is there a particular deal like a really tough deal that you've brokered or where like you've been in the 11th hour and you've like walked away or told your client like this isn't you know like given hard advice or things like that you know without naming names or anything like that but can you describe maybe some yeah. situations where you had to put um, your foot down yep. or different things I had that recently um with a player and it was you know Let's just say sometimes some play- players feel like they they deserve more or they're entitled to more mm-hmm. than what you know reality is. And mm-hmm. you know there was a decent opportunity. I didn't feel a hundred percent about it, uh, but the client mm-hmm. was more into it, and I said no because after reviewing it with the legal team and everything, and I was like, if you look at this on the back end, this is not good. Mm-hmm. It's not good. And of course it takes a while because they're like, oh no, we should do it. We should do it. I'm like, no, this, you sign this and you hate me. And I don't want mm-hmm. you to hate me because I'm telling you no, not to do it. But right. you want to just trust your gut when it's five of us telling you no. We're mm-hmm. telling you no, you know? And so finally the client decided not to because they realized that, yeah. You were right. <laughs> yeah, like it's like, it really would have been bad for them. Um, yeah. And also too, because I felt like the situation they were in, it's like, don't burn the bridge if, if they were willing to make a huge investment for you to stay mm-hmm. in that current situation. Yeah. So um, yeah, that was tricky, but yeah. yeah. Well, that, you know, that advice is very invaluable, you know, and, and having, because players and coaches get caught up in like, oh, someone wants me or you know, oh, this could hmm. be a great opportunity. And then- Oh, you know, I saw really someone to... go there and I want to go there too, not knowing the person's yeah. situation. And it's like, okay, yeah. because, because if I had the choice to be an agent, then I'd sign every big player in the world, you know? Like if, mm-hmm. if we really had a choice, mm-hmm. but sometimes we don't. Yeah, no, that's so interesting. So where do you see- I know that like if you had a crystal ball uh, to see the future, like where do you see the growth of like the women's game for girls as far as like on the field, off the field, you know, front office, like what are your, what are your wishes and hopes for, for the growth of, of women's soccer? More women in leadership roles. 
Um, and when I say like Lisa, you know, we have Lisa Baird, who's the head of uh, NWSL on the commissioner side. The fact that there's only what, maybe two GMs in the NWSL, absolutely not. I think there needs mm-hmm. to be more. If, if there's what, 10, 11 teams, there should be 11 women GMs. I'm sorry, but there mm-hmm. should be 11 as many teams as there are in the league, I agree. There you know, be, I agree. <laughs> there should be GMs. Even if you say, okay, the head coach is going to be a male, that's fine. That's mm-hmm. fine. But make sure that GM or the president yeah. is a female. How could yeah. how can you say it's a woman's league? And yet, how many coaches? How many head coaches? How many GMs? And then look yeah. at how many head coaches are in the league. I'm I'm sorry, guys. It just gets me frustrated because. Yeah, don't be like, sorry. No That's way. why we're having this conversation. No way. Like, there's just no, I mean, I had to really sit back and I'm like, man, what I would do to be a fly on the wall in the league's office, like who's making these decisions, of, mm-hmm. you know, hiring the coaches because we need more. Mm-hmm. We need more, you know? Yeah. So that is my, my dream. My wish is to see more. Um, one of my ultimate, ultimate goals, probably in about 10 years is to hopefully either, I thought about maybe being a GM, but preferably be an owner and possibly be a be mm-hmm. an owner of like an all women's team. And I'm talking all women from players, head coach, GM, entirely. Count, women. count me in. Count me in. Entirely <laughs> women. And if it's something that I have to start, I give myself about five, 10 years to put it together. Yeah. But that that's my ultimate dream. But yeah. I definitely want to no, see that's... more. Yeah. I think that's, you know. I can see it. And especially now, like there's so many more women that are coaching. There's so many more women that are involved in different levels of the sport. However, the people in the decision making power continuing, you know, continuing to be men a lot of the time. And, you know, like we love men, we have nothing against men and men are great. And we have, you know, there's a lot of male advocates out there. Um, you know, a lot of my mentors are men, but mm-hmm. like you said, if, if we There's are some going to have, too. yeah, like if we're going to have a really strong, powerful women's league, we need to make that commitment that it's, it is by and for women. Yes. And, Even, you know, man, I say, um, cause an idea came to me and I was curious about this, that within the NWSO, like you know, um, and I even, I think I mentioned it to a friend that's within the legal office. Like, I would love to see, maybe if there's a program for women that are going to retire, if mm-hmm. they have interest to possibly get into coaching, like if, mm-hmm. if they can go through a program within NWSL to provide coaching courses that yeah. could then kind of help them still stay within the league. So it's not like, oh, yeah. I retire and that's it. I'm done with NWSL. That's it. I don't want nothing to do with it. No, but you're still active. You're still involved. And if you want to be a coach, you know, there's a program that, oh, you you want to retire? Okay, great. We'll put you through this yeah. program because you've expressed interest in wanting to be coaching. And that way, when that player does retire and they've gone through those courses, they now can possibly mm-hmm. sit in a role with a coach, with a team. And, yeah. and the story is so well, much more greater because it's like, wow, this person played in the league for maybe 10 years, retired, went through this program. And it makes more players start to say, well, you know what? I've always wanted to be a coach. And now mm-hmm. it's like th- this is a perfect example because yeah. I, don't have to, I, don't, I don't have to feel sad about leaving the league that I played and loved so much that gave me an opportunity, but I can still be involved. And then help yeah. you know the future generation. Yeah, you you touched on a good point, and I'm not sure what U.S. Soccer is planning for like maybe having a program like that. I know they've launched um, just not for necessarily for players, but for women in general. They're putting um, money towards paying for half of uh, co- half of a coaching license for like a licensed candidates, and they've created a mentorship program within U.S. Soccer for female coaches, which is great. Mm-hmm. However, I, I just saw that they brokered a deal with the USL and they're, they're doing a program for 31 male USL players to jump straight to their C license. And my, my head went to, and I think I tweeted it, that's fantastic. However, what are you doing for women? 
And, you know, I could be speaking out of turn. Maybe there's something in the works. I really hope there's something in the works, but that would be great to allow a similar program for uh, women in the NWSL to jump straight to their C license. And, you know, within soccer, there's different levels and you start at, at in grassroots and work your way up. And so like, if they're doing it for the men, the professional men, which, you know, no offense to USL, that's division two professional men, there should be a similar program for, for the women's side. So Absolutely. hopefully that's coming. Um, it better come because if they're, if they started <laughs> for the men, I'm going to be knocking on some doors. You, you and I, Maggie, will be knocking on some doors. Um, for yes, women. for sure. Well, I mean, listen, we could definitely look into that and see, you know, because yeah. I think, and I think honestly, especially for women, like the impact would just be mm-hmm. so huge so huge because you'd be surprised how many women would want to sign up for that course because Mm -hmm. because it's bigger than just playing the game it's the love of the sport it's wanting to give back you know and and a lot of times because it opens the doors for these younger the future generation because it's hard to be things that you can't see it's hard to be something Mm -hmm. that you can't see so if if i see my favorite player retired and they're taking these courses and they're going through this program and next thing you know they're coaching I definitely want to mm-hmm. sign up for whatever they have, whether it's a yeah. camp or, you know, I, I want to sign up for that. So yeah. hopefully. So question. Yes, we will. We will do that. We will get that, that rolling. Um, so for you, Maggie, I know you've got some ideas of, of some programming you want to do through women in soccer. Like, can you maybe share, cause I, I can see you putting on classes for, you know, <laughs> college women coming out that want to be an agent and, you know, mm-hmm. having that best practices. Is that something that, that you're thinking about doing or, you know, Absolutely. Are, is in, is in your five-year plan for dom- yep. world dominance? <laughs> can you talk about that? A little bit? Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that, um, that I'm considering for sure to start, you know, holding like different type of uh, workshops or or courses. And hopefully I can do that within women in soccer. Um, Mm -hmm. A few other things, like I love to plan events too. So like just doing Mm -hmm. things to really get the community of women within the sport together and, you know, doing something cool. But I think, yeah, a workshop would be great. Um, And I think it like, it dawned on me yesterday because I was like, man, even if I can't start a workshop right now because my schedule is hectic, maybe do something like on YouTube or even on Twitter. And, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you give people the opportunity to ask any question they want to ask about being an agent that I can't answer. Right. Yeah, no, I think that that would be great because, you know, again, a lot of times young women see coaching as maybe the only option and, you know, they don't think about being a sports agent or they don't think about being a GM, a physical, a GM or a president or, a C, you know, like they, they see themselves in only a few roles. And like you said, if you can't see it, you don't even realize it's right. available to you. And it's interesting. It's interesting because I had someone reach out to me last week and mm-hmm. they were, I think I said they were taking an agent course, but their background was in like. I think it was like physical therapy or something like that um, or sports mm-hmm. medicine, so, something around there. And I'm like, <laughs> I would use that, you know, I would really use that because you don't see women in that, right? Like how often mm-hmm. do you see um, a sports doctor or a sports physical therapist within even soccer? I mean, I, I can't tell you, honestly, I can't yeah. tell you how many, or even like, you know, I would say sporting directors, being a GM, mm-hmm. Uh, coach, owner, you know, we need more of all of those positions, honestly. Yeah. A lot more. Yeah. Well, that's our charge. And that's, you know, that's why we, we do talks like this. That's why we try to connect and, and, you know, empower women and girls and try to be role models as best we can. And, and, you know, just be ourselves and, and be successful and capable and competent in, in all that we do. Um, because there's, I see the future um, for women's soccer and women's sport in general, um, you know, just on a, a trajectory upward. Um, I think I saw on social media the other day that the NWSL was the most 
socially active, like the engagements were the highest. Absolutely. Of all the, of yeah, all the it was um, NWSL and WNBA were the two highest, like surpassed NBA, yeah. NFL, um, MLB, and NWSL took the top spot, um, especially during mm-hmm. like the Challenge Cup. So that mm-hmm. just goes to show you, you know, when brands say the point four that, you know, you guys want to invest, you might want to change mm-hmm. that because if we're coming in number one, that's something yeah. that, you know, you need to put, like your strategy needs to be focused towards that. And, and I mean, we saw that just this past summer with NWSL and even WNBA with those two mm-hmm. leagues itself. I mean, the brands, yeah. if I were brands, I'd be flocking to them, honestly. Yeah. No, and that's the thing. I think viewership was up during the the cup, the NWSL oh, yeah. cup, like four hundred percent. NWSL, I think their first week, their first game was like over about over three hundred thousand, and it was yeah. it's about a hundred thousand more um, more consumers that watched than mm-hmm. than they watched MLS or even NBA games. So that just goes to show you the power of you know the sport of soccer. Yeah. Hey, brands, are you listening? <laughs> get involved. <laughs> they get, need get to. Connected. All of them. All yeah. of them. All of them. Especially the small and emerging ones, honestly. If I'm them, that's the best place because you won't have to break your budget because you can even right. curate. You can curate something really cool with the women's league or sport or, you know, brand. Um, team in particular you can really curate something that could be tailored around the team tailored around the players you could probably get one or two players to actually get involved i think we i saw that with um secret the deodorant company they did yeah. that with you know nwsl and the challenge cup and they started to kind of pull some players from each team and i was like that's perfect because that allows them to engage more yeah um Quick question, when, when we're talking about brands, um, are, are there any brands that are like off limits or, um, you know, how, do, how does that work? Because, you know, there's there's kind of some things that maybe brand, the brands are controversial or like, how does mm-hmm. how does that work from, from a marketing some perspective? Could be con- some could be controversial. I think at first I would have always said maybe alcohol is a tricky category. Um, mm-hmm. But obviously we saw with Anheuser-Busch being a partner to NWSL now for a few years. So that's a successful mm-hmm. partnership. We saw that Heineken came on board as yeah. Angel City's first um, official partner. So technically, I guess you can't say that alcohol is off limits. Um, what I would love to see yeah. in the future, and this is something I have constant um, talks with different brands. When it comes to women, I would tap more into the fashion and beauty brands. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. I, I've been craving to see a player come out for their match with like an amazing popping lipstick color for the game. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think that Marta did so, that. I think Marta, Marta did a press conference. She did that in the World Cup. She did press, yeah, yeah, she did it in the World Cup. Yeah. So just imagine how big that was. And she probably didn't mm-hmm. even have a partner. She probably just put on some lipstick and said, I'm going out and I'm playing this. Because at mm-hmm. the end of the day, as women, we want to feel beautiful even while we're playing mm-hmm. the sport, you know? Yeah. We're, the women are beautiful and it's okay to put on a nice lipstick or a nice lip gloss. And it's like, or even mm-hmm. if you want to put on like waterproof eyelashes, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. some something really cool and creative. So brands, if you're listening, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I'd be more than happy to kind of paint the picture of how <laughs> Um, of what that would look like but things like that is to me it's like innovative it's something different uh-huh. you know yeah. and even with that they can do it twofold brands could say you know what in the U.S. here I'm gonna go after NWSL and WNBA league I'm gonna go after the league and do this and I believe that that would be very successful for that brand mm-hmm. yeah no that's a really good point well, Maggie, any final thoughts from you? We're going to wrap this up. Um, this is, did we know. have any other questions or no? We didn't have any questions. Um, any more questions that we needed we, to answer? We, yeah, I think we hit most, I think we hit all of them um, okay. that I'm, that I'm seeing. Any, any closing words, any words of wisdom, advice for people? Um, yeah. I mean, my advice is, you know, 
for just all sports and women and, and just in general, you know, I scream it all the time that people must invest in women's sports. It's so important to invest in women's sports. Um, and as women, just, you know, whether you're in soccer, whether you're in basketball or, you know, uh, tennis, hockey, don't ever let someone tell you that you can't do it. Whenever they tell you no, just look at no as the opportunity to be turned into on. That's, that's how I like to look at it. So just keep pushing, keep pushing. And yeah, and uh, thank you once again to America Scores and thank you, Carrie, for this. I'm super grateful. Thank, Thank you, Megan. you. You're awesome. Sorry, Alicia, Karen, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just saying it's always great to talk to Maggie, and you know she's such a powerful force um, with within the sport, and is just just doing wonderful things for for women, and is very selfless in, in what she does. So. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you, Maggie and Alicia. Thank you so much for allowing this opportunity. America Scores is fantastic. And, you know, just the, 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 uh, the inspiration and the poetry. Um, I, don't, I don't know if anybody shared this with you, but we were, Maggie and I, I think Maggie was on the call. We were on a call the other day with Brandy Chastain. And she actually said that, you know, with through her partnership with America Scores, she wrote a poem that she read before a World Cup match. And, you know, that that's amazing. So you have a World Cup winner who, you know, was inspired to be a poet and read it to her teammates. And she's like, some people thought I was dorky, but it was this beautiful <laughs> expression that she read before a World Cup match. So I, I just wanted to share that with you because that is that's phenomenal. So thank you for, for all you do with for America Scores and across you know the 12,000 uh, poet athletes that you reach every, every day. Well, if, yes. if anyone is interested in hearing uh, Brandy read a page of her poem, they can look at the replay from yesterday's session with uh, Julie Faldi and Brandy. Um, we, she Fearless, oh, she, she read, read She read one page. She said it's like seven pages. So she read one page and it was, yeah, it was awesome. Um, I'm sorry, Maggie, did you? I just wanted to say, um, I'm a huge fan of America Scores and we'll probably talk offline about how I can um, get more involved. I mean, I'm not in the Bay Area, but I'm in New York and I know you guys have New York chapters. So I definitely, um, you don't, you don't, definitely you don't want to, to join. Bay Area. You can oh, okay. work in Bay Area. Come on. <laughs> um, okay. I just, <laughs> I just want to th say thank you to both of you because you're, you're both really trendsetters and really opening, paving the way. It's, you know, Carrie, obviously we know, getting into the coaching the men's uh, side and Maggie yes. opening the door for women um, to actually be represented by someone who really knows what they need. Um, that is really, really... I, so. Um, all those national players, I hope they uh, come on over mm. to you. <laughs> um, so Say it louder. <laughs> yeah. Manifest it. Manifest it. I don't know. Yeah, put it on my board, right? Um, yeah. Thank you so much to both of you for taking the time out of your day to share with us. And, um, you know, Maggie, you get that team in 10 years in GM, I'm on board. Go oh, yes, yes, Justin. I'm yes. there because uh, I think that's awesome, and I'm putting my um, what I want to see come true is a, a team in the Bay Area. We want that. Um, so agree. Yes. <laughs> um, agree. So, on behalf of America Scores, thank you so much, and um, we're going to thank our sponsors, our partners again, Goal Five, and Women in Soccer which I know Carrie is, um, I think you're, are you one of the founders also? Yes, Maggie we're on the board together board? as well. Yep, yep. we're board, okay. yep. we're board awesome. partners as well. Carrie's doing a podcast, a weekly podcast. So that's awesome. So thank you so much. And Maggie, if people want to get a hold of you, how can they do that? Um, social is always good. I do respond to DMs um, so they can definitely... I don't know if I can put it in the chat, but I can always send it to you also. Well, we can, we're going to send out an email to everyone who attended. Okay, perfect. So if perfect, you, yeah. Whatever I'll, you want to add, to you. let us know. Yeah. Yeah, I'll email it well, to you. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. No problem. Thank you.
one more day of one sessions. Um, one more session today with Leslie Gallimore um, from the Girls Academy. And one more day of sessions tomorrow. So we hope to see everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Stay safe. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Alicia. No problem. Thanks, Carrie.